January 1966. Two ACE test pilots prepare for a critical experimental flight. The plane they're about to fly is an ultra-fast covert military jet and it's just been modified to maximize performance. In the cockpit is a pilot with 4,000 flying hours under his belt, Bill Weaver. We took off about uh, 11, 11 something in the morning. We headed out on the program route. Everything was okay, routine. In the back seat is reconnaissance expert, Jim Zweyer. Copy that. Flying at Mach 3.2, Weaver banks into a turn. And without warning, one of his engines storms. It's a very startling event. You could never prepare yourself for him. It was once described by one of the pilots as like being in a train wreck. At over 3,000 kilometers an hour, the unbalanced plane is impossible to control. It pitches into a catastrophically steep climb. I had to stick full left corner of the cockpit and no response to the airplane at all. I knew that we were just going to be along for the ride when that happened. Inside two seconds, the plane starts to break up. The airplane just basically disintegrated around us. The quest to build the world's fastest spy plane is on the edge of disaster. The story of the SR-71 Blackbird begins nine years earlier. In 1957, the Soviet Union develops intercontinental ballistic missiles. Dear Khrushchev Post, that Russia already has intercontinental missiles in mass production. The threat of a direct nuclear strike on US cities makes gathering intelligence on the Soviet's nuclear arsenal a top priority. Well, in any conflict, knowledge is power. And we had to find out what the Soviet Union was doing particularly with a missile program. We had a vital need to understand the capabilities of the Soviet military machine, but the Soviet Union was so vast that we could not gain this uh, by using conventional aircraft. America needs specialist spy planes to fly reconnaissance missions deep into Soviet territory. Without being detected by radar and shot down by enemy jets. <laughs> 